Are you thinking about majoring in kinesiology? Or maybe you already are and are still wondering what to do with it. Well, today we're going to cover a few things you can do with a kinesiology or exercise science degree. But keep in mind, these are just very few options that you can still take. There are endless possibilities. First on the list is athletic trainer. Athletic trainers have a key role in helping athletes avoid injury and responding to incidents with appropriate medical care and rehabilitation. Their job can include using special training programs to educate players on how to work out safely, giving physical assessments to diagnose sprains, broken bones, and other injuries, using braces, splints, bandages as first aid, and monitoring players to determine when they are safe to play again. When necessary, they consult with a team of medical professionals to treat serious injuries and come up with a rehab plan for the player. To be an AT or athletic trainer, you need your bachelor's of science in sports training or a master's degree that has accredi accreditation from the Commission of Accreditation of Athletic Training Education. But a master's degree is not necessary to become an AT. However, you will need to pass the sports training licensure exam through the board of certification for the athletic trainer to meet certain state requirements. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average median salary in 2017 was $46,630, with the highest paid athletic trainers making more than $69,530. Factors that affect your salary can include your years of experience, the work setting, and the geographic location. Starting pay is around $38,000 on average as of May 2018. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics also expects ATs to have a 23% employment growth between now and 2026. So the job outlook is looking pretty good as more people of all ages are exercising. Number two on the list is strength and conditioning coach. As a certified strength and conditioning coach or CSCC, you will design and implement strength training and conditioning programs for athletes in a team setting. This can be various settings from a collegiate to a professional team. Being a C SCC is different than an athletic trainer as athletic trainers evaluate and treat sports injuries for athletes while strength and conditioning coaches develop and implement specific strength and conditioning programs for the athletes. Becoming a strength and conditioning coach requires an undergraduate degree in an exercise science field and although not required, a graduate degree is becoming more common and preferred. You will also need to obtain an NSCA or National Strength and Conditioning Association Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist Certification. Depending on your job, more than one certification is usually preferred. Experience in leadership, coaching, and weight room management is also helpful. Number three on the list is Occupational Therapy or OTs. As an OT, your focus is on therapy related to daily activities or occupations, so your scope of practice includes the general population. An OT helps people gain better function of their bodies so that their daily activities can be performed better. Some common occupational therapy interventions include helping children with disabilities to participate fully in school and social situations, helping people recover from work, and providing supports for older adults experiencing physical and cognitive changes. Occupational therapy practitioners also have a holistic perspective in which the focus is on adapting the environment and or task to fit the person. The educational requirements include a bachelor's degree, commonly in OT, biology, psychology, sociology, and some liberal arts depending on the requirements of the graduate school. You must also go to an OT school to receive your master's degree to become a practitioner. Next, you need to pass the National Board of, for Certification of Occupational Therapy exam and then apply for your state license. The median, the median annual salary for occupational therapists was $81,910 in 2016, and according to the BLS or the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the best paid 10% in the profession made $119,000 while the lowest paid 10% made around $54,000. Next up is physical therapists. Physical therapists or PTs help patients reduce pain and restore mobility, in most cases without the need for surgery and prescription medication. PTs can teach patients how to manage their condition and will examine individual patients and then develop a program for that patient. As a PT, you will provide care for people in a variety of settings such as outpatient clinics, rehabilitation facilities, education or research centers, schools, hospices, fitness centers, and other occupational environments. To become a PT, you will need to be accepted into an accredited physical therapist program and receive your graduate degree, either a master's or a clinical doctorate. Today, there are a growing number of programs that offer the Doctor of Physical Therapy degree, or DPT. Following graduation, you will need to pass a state-administered national exam and any other requirements of your state. The salary for a PT depends on your experience, location, and skill set. 
but on average, a PT makes an annual salary of $86,520. Right now, the need for physical therapists is growing, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, employment for PTs is expected to grow 36% from 2012 to 2022, which is pretty nice if you're going down that route. Number five is a physician. Physicians and surgeons diagnose and treat injuries or illnesses. As a physician, you would examine patients, take medical histories, and prescribe medication. While most students aspiring to be doctors are usually a biology, biochem, or chemistry major, you don't need any specific degree or major for medical school, and there are many students who pursue non-traditional physical science majors that end up going to med school to become doctors. To be a doctor, you will need to take the required pre-med courses in your undergraduate years. There are some variation between med schools, but for the most part, you will have to take a combination of biology, chemistry, biochemistry, physics, English, and math classes. You will also need to take the MCAT or Medical College Admissions Test to apply for med school. After four years of med school where you also need to take your USMLE step exams, you then apply for a residency program which can take anywhere between three to seven years depending on what you want to specialize in, whether that's surgery or internal medicine or whatever the case. After residency, you also have the option of doing a fellowship. A physician's salary depends on their specialty and their location. In 2017, physicians were making a median salary of $208,000. In kinesiology, you also have the choice of going to sports-related careers. Um, this can be in marketing, administration, journalism, or management for sports. That's it for this video. Hopefully, it was somewhat helpful. Again, there are endless possibilities to what you can do using a kinesiology or exercise science degree. These are just very few examples that we covered. In the description below there are also links to different sites that have more information related to these careers. If I missed anything in the video, also let me know in the comments below. My name is John and I'm with Sports Science Student. I'll see you in the next video.